China always in focus on Wall Street now is even more so as banks there will be undergoing their own stress tests. Here with what to expect is Don Strasheim, the senior managing director and head of China research at International Strategy and Investment. Uh, he joins us from the West Coast this morning. Good morning to you, Don. I know there's a, a fair amount of speculation as to just what these stress tests are going to look like. What is it on the metric front that you are expecting to be examined and how reliable do you expect the results to be? Margaret, it now looks like they are suggesting stress test assuming a 60% price decline in housing in seven major cities, Beijing, Shanghai, and a couple others, big, well-known cities. That's an extraordinarily severe stress test because that would leave house prices in those cities about 40% lower than they were five years ago, and while incomes are up about 80% from where they were five years ago. So I think, quite frankly, they are also still unrealistic, but what I think is not important. What is important is what Beijing is trying to do to assess the potential risks in this area. And uh, in your most recent note, you highlight there are two cities in China that are sort of special cases, but, but you're emphasizing that these are seven cities that are very much in focus with this 60 percent figure um, because of those headlines that broke last week uh, and we had reported about some of that, the handicapping of results did cause some fear. But it sounds like you're saying the severity of the metric is, is a good thing here. Well, no, I don't think it's a good thing uh, at all. I think it is still unrealistic. There are two cities what in What is unrealistic? Uh, on the 60% price decline in seven cities? That's, that's correct. 60% price decline is unrealistic in China, except in the two cities on Hainan Island, which they call China's Hawaii. A lot of speculation there drove house prices way up. They could come down uh, with a bang. No one would know or care <laughs> except the uh, small population in that uh, area but 60 percent across the board or even in these other major cities seems to me like it is uh, too extreme really to provide much guidance to uh, policymakers or investors either. Now, China is testing out these energy curbs um, it, within manufacturing areas of the country. How are some of those restrictions going to impact the level of manufacturing or perhaps skew export numbers? Um, this is an important story, Margaret. Uh, China has been working very hard to try to clean up their environment for years and trying to reduce their energy consumption relative to the amount of uh, output they produce. Energy efficiency, if you will. They're pushing further on that uh, now, and they're talking about restricting um, production in some of the um, really energy intensive areas, and the metals are the most important ones. So we need to watch and see just how hard they push on this, but it's clearly a focus of the government uh, in the long term. Yeah, a concern that they might be sacrificing some, some growth there and trying to meet their own uh, deadlines. A story here caught my eye, and I want to ask you about it, and that's um, this idea that China's relationship with Iran, their ties, trade ties perhaps being strengthened by sanctions on the U.S. front against Iran. Uh, how much are you seeing in terms of activity uh, with Iran right now? Well, not a great deal, quite frankly, with Iran in uh, particular. But the broader point, I think, is America is not likely to have much success trying to tell China who they can have uh, foreign economic relations with and who they can't. Um, we're not very interested in having China tell us about how to conduct our monetary or fiscal policy, right. and they're not very interested in us telling them uh, something that is uh, kind of similar on the trade front. With um, monetary policy, quickly here, uh, Treasury Secretary Geithner see, says, watch how fast the yuan is allowed to appreciate as a gauge for success here. Is that a fair way to look at what's happening with our currency? Well, it's, uh, it's fair. It's not really productive. Uh, China has not bought on to the idea 
that they're going to allow their currency to, to appreciate uh, rapidly. So Geithner's going to be disappointed yeah. again on this matter. Yeah, well, it took three years last time to allow it to uh, appreciate 20 percent, so perhaps fast right, right. may not be the right word. Thank you very much, uh, Don Strasheim, joining us this morning from California.